morning, everyone. Uh, nice to see you all. Uh, I hope I get to meet you afterwards. My name is Tom, Tom for Medak, or Tom for short. Um, and it's a great honor to be able to open this conference. Uh, I will try to give uh, a talk that kind of introduces us into the topic of the project, which is called Toolkit of Care. Um, I will be speaking here for a collective that I work with. It's called Tired Care. Uh, and includes, or the conveners of that project are together with me, uh, Valeria Gattiano and Marcel Mars, who unfortunately couldn't be here today with us. Um, I haven't timed my, uh, my presentation, so uh, I'm scheduled to talk for 45 minutes. If I go over it or seem to go over it, I'll cut it short, uh, but I hope to be shorter than 45 minutes and that will leave us some time to uh, discuss. Uh, I'd like to hear your thoughts and whatever questions you might have, uh, please feel free to raise them. Uh, I, I hope we can have uh, a, a fruitful conversation for the coming sessions. Um, Okay, so in this, mor morning, in this morning's talk, I will discuss how can we read the present crisis of care that many societies are continuing to face in the aftermath of the con coronavirus pandemic. And what is the role of technology in aggravating that crisis and helping organize against it? This I will explore from the perspective of Tire Care, a project that Valeria Gattian, Marcel Mars, and I have convened four years ago. I will introduce the practices of pirate care, discuss, discuss how community care organizing in the pan pandemic has filled the gap in care, uh, which is structural in character, yet failed to politicize and contest the larger realignment in the provision of care. Furthermore, I will discuss the technopolitical implications of our project and of uh, various pirate care practices. These reflections are in many respects dark or not encouraging really, but provide indi indications of how we can, in Ruth Wilson Gilmore's words, rehearse for living, uh, create a just and sustainable life for all, where the care in the community and the public care pro provision are built in a just and mutually catalyzing way. Okay, I'll take us first through the hoops of how we define care uh, and various strands of theory uh, that try to uh, situate care um, as generic human activity, but also uh, from critical uh, theory of care. Uh, here are two definitions. In the most general sense, care is a species activity that includes everything we do to maintain, continue, and repair our world so that we may live in it as well as possible. The world includes our bodies, ourselves, and our environment, all of which we seek to interweave in a complex, life-sustaining web. This is a quote from John Tronto and Bernice Fisher. It's a canonical uh, definition, in a way. Uh, here's another take by David, late David Graeber. If you think about it, is that not what life is basically about? Human beings are projects of mutual creation. Most of the work we do is on each other. The working, class, the working classes just do a disproportionate share. They are the caring classes and always have been. Throughout our lives, we depend on the support of our families, friends, strangers, and institutions to sustain ourselves and to sustain the world in which we and the future generations have to live. That interdependency of humans and non-human nature in social and ecological reproduction defines the relations of care. And the effort to sustain those relations defines the labor of care. Uh, our project, Pirate Care, was convened with the objective to map and connect collective practices that are emerging in response to what Nancy Fraser has called neoliberal crisis of care, a convergence of processes that include austerity, 
replacement of universal welfare provision with means testing and workfare, the conservative attack on reproductive and trans rights, and the criminalization of migration that have denied that vital support, the care, to many. Against this background of financialized global capitalism catalyzing the crisis of care, over the last decade and a half, we, we have witnessed a growing wave of mobilizations around care addressing a number of fundamental needs. For instance, Docs Not Cops campaign in the UK with doctors and medical staff refusing to carry out document checks on, mi on migrant patients. The growing resistance to homelessness via the reappropriation of houses left empty by speculators like in the case of La Paz in Spain. The defiance to legislation making homelessness illegal, such as in Hungary, uh, where rough sleeping was banned in October 2018. Or the civilian search and rescue ships, such as those operated by Sea-Watch, that defy the criminalization of NGOs active to save lives of those crossing the Mediterranean. These practices do not only push back against the legal repression of vulnerable people, but also against the institutional negligence of care systems. In Greece, uh, an example that will be known to many here, a growing number of grassroots clinics set up by the Solidarity Movement have responded in the last decade to the draconian cuts to public services by providing medical attention to those without private insurance. In Italy, vicarious parents without recourse to public childcare are organizing their own pirate kindergarten. In Spain, feminists around the collective Genepunk have developed a toolkit for gynecological self-diagnosis to allow all those excluded from reproductive health services, such as trans women, drug users, or sex workers, to perform basic checks on their own bodies. Meanwhile, the collective Women on Waves has been providing safe contraceptive and abortion options to women in countries where these are not available, at times using boats harbored in international waters like veritable care pirates. And pirate carers also liberate knowledge. This is the practice that, as you'll see, I come from where access is denied to public libraries, as in the case of shadow libraries. Uh, our project is called Memory of the World, and you can see the screenshot from there. I'll come back to it. Um, crucially, uh, these old practices share a willingness to openly disobey laws and executive orders, wherever these stand in the way of safety and solidarity, and politicize that disobedience to contest the political and social status quo. That disobedience and that politicization is what defines them, in our view, as pirate care. Our project, project specifically uh, is aimed to activate uh, collective learning processes from the knowledge generated in and around these practices. In this, we have been inspired by the phenomenon of hashtag syllable that is crowdsourced online syllabi created by social justice movements in response to situations of intense antagonisms, such as uh, hashtag Ferguson syllabus created in response to the police killing of Michael Brown in 2014 in Ferguson, Missouri, or gaming and feminism syllabus created in response to the Gamergate harassment campaign um, against the feminist computer game writers or hashtag standing rock syllables created in response to the Lakota, Dakota, Nakota nations standoff against the Dakota Access pi Pipeline. We have analyzed uh, this phenomenon, the phenomenon of hashtag, hashtag syllabi, so syllabi created mostly on Twitter as threads. Uh, in our article, Learning from Hashtag Syllables, which was commissioned for the 2019 State Machines collected volume of essays co-published co by our host Neme, amongst others. Here you can be, see in the background two publications, one that was authored by Valeria, it's Reveling with Care, her interests are in technologies and care, um, but also in 
um, uh, critical organizational studies. Um, and you can see also uh, in the article that we have written, uh, I guess it's available uh, on our uh, pirate library, but also you can ask Yanis uh, uh, and Ellen, they might have copies of safe machines around and I'm sure they'll be happy to uh, provide you with. Um, building on that reflection, on the reflection of uh, social movements, building resources for collective learning and analysis of situations in uh, intense moments of confrontation, we have set up uh, our uh, we have set out to develop a radical pedagogy approach that would help social justice initiatives write online syllabi of their own. The first round of topics for the Pirate Care Syllabus was written in, to, in November of 2019 during a writing retreat organized by Drugo More in Rijeka and launched on March 8, 2020 for the opening of Red Wine, Cars, Security and Peace exhibition at Kunsthalle Wien in Vienna. Uh, the syllabus um, written in that uh, retreat, but also over the course of time since then, includes uh, topics such as criminalization of solidarity, sea rescue and care, common in care work and child care, housing struggles, psychosocial autonomy, a peer-to-peer -peer social technology of healthcare, community safety from racializing, uh, racialized policing, transfeminist hacking, hormone toxicity and bodily, bodily sovereignty, gender equality in tech milieus, and politicizing digital piracy. The syllabus you can find at syllabus.pirate.care and uh, you can explore different topics. Topics were written by practitioners themselves and we have facilitated that process with the idea that they set to paper or s write down um, practical ways of engaging with what they do so that somebody might, people like us, learn from that and potentially learn from that collectively. Um, we were planning to organize a collective learning process in 2020 based on that collectively written syllabus, a summer camp of sorts. However, that was never meant to be because uh, just a couple of days after we launched the syllabus on Mar March 8th, the COVID-19 pandemic was breaking out across Europe. So we have rolled out uh, rolled over our work on the syllabus into a collective note-taking effort to document organizing of mutual aid, solidarity and care initiatives emerging in response to the crisis. Um, that documentation we have called Flatten the Curve, Grow the Care. What are we learning from COVID-19? With participation of a broader part care community, many of the people with whom we have written the syllabus uh, previously. We have collected and created around 50 notes, instructions, and how-tos that were coming and were being used by mutual aid organizers in Italy, Croatia, the UK, and elsewhere. The notes included information on how to assist people in home isolation or how to organize solidarity kitchens. On reproductive rights, home violence, and childcare in the quarantine, on mutual aid models for the jobless, for instance, sex workers, or write-ups on the implications uh, of the pandemic on disability, environmentalism, and technology. All these notes or documents were immediately translated into English, Italian, German, Spanish, depending on what language they were written, and used widely. However, a couple of months into the pandemic, there was no shortage of resources many far superior to ours. Documenting practice, practices was also not the purpose of our endeavor, so we have gone back to our work with the pirate care practitioners. Still, we have continued following the care organizing amidst, um, amidst the crisis and reflecting on its trajectory. I will not be speaking so much about it uh, in this presentation, but we might come to sort of the lessons learned from the pandemic uh, in our Q&A. Um, K 
Care is frequently embraced uncritically as a warm and fuzzy notion represented by a Facebook emoji, you know, uh, emoji uh, embracing a heart and you click on that to share, to say to someone that you care, care for uh, where they are and uh, what they express. The COVID-19 pandemic had, has made uh, many of the pre-existing contradictions of social and ecological reproduction under financialized global capitalism more apparent. Let's quickly look at, those, uh, at what those contradictions are. Firstly, caring is not intrinsically nice. Care work always involves power relations and processes of discipline, exclusion, and harm. It is a necessary and skilled form of labor that is shouldered by workers, mostly unwaged women and migrants, who themselves receive the least amount of care while serving those who take, who take care labor for granted. Reciprocity and solidarity are not implied in the care sectors. Uh, the famous graph, uh, this graph here, uh, I guess, so that graph there, uh, that we also sort of have uh, compressed into our title, flatten the curve, grow the care, represents two curves standing for higher or lower rates of contagion. And an unspecified healthcare capacity represented by a straight line that the ideal pandemic curve should not breach. No, we should lower the, the infection rate so that the curve stays down. That was, that was the notion. And then the straight line there represents the capacity of healthcare system to, uh, to uh, deal with the patients and, and help them in the best manner possible. However, the straight line is never a straight nor single line. It actually depicts the decline of society's capacity for care under the relentless neoliberalization and criminalization. So it's a declining line, I would say. And it depicts the uneven distribution of healthcare capacity, which is until the pandemic visible only on one side of the class, gender, and race divide. And it suddenly detonated as a generalized social threat once the pandemic struck struck, you know, like there wasn't enough care. There was a care gap in the medical system, but also for those quarantining uh, at home, there was not enough assistance to bring help to them. And actually that line, it's many lines, is experienced in the everyday. Thirdly, now that we know much more about the social ideology of the coronavirus, it is clear that those who were in the front line and on whom societies depended for the provision of care and reproductive labor, those who had no choice but to go to work and who were hardest hit by the pandemic have <coughs> remained and will continue to remain the more vulnerable uh, on, the, on their side of the class, gender, and race divide. Not much has changed. No, there was sort of a swell of heroization of frontline workers and social workers who are mostly uh, women and frequently race of, of uh, other races uh, in the global north. You can see here how many people on the front line there were in the US. Uh, this is a representation of that. And uh, in a way, two years down the line, uh, things have not changed in spite of the promises at the beginning of the pandemic. And, People are massively leaving the care sector. Uh, I was based in the UK for a period of time before the pandemic. The NHS is really bleeding people. People just don't want to stay in the care sector and uh, continue working under the conditions that they were working before the pandemic and especially uh, in the pandemic. Let me provide two Austrian examples of disobedient organizing of care workers in the pandemic. Uh, these two examples highlight and address the asymmetries that I've spoken about. First one is called BREP, it, and it's a self-organized in initiative of East European living care workers in Austria. 
that was founded in 2020 to protect caregivers from, from exploitation and abuse. The conditions of quarantine, these were even stricter. Now many live-in care workers had to stay quarantined so that they wouldn't uh, risk the life of people they were caring for. Uh, the initiative provided counseling, crisis support, and political advocacy for caregivers who are nominally self-employed in Austria, but in reality are recruited and dependent on employment agencies, making them ineligible for trade union representation, minimum wage agreements, paid vacation, or sick leave. DREP argues that if caregivers were entitled to full protection under labor, labor law, the entire system of elderly care would no longer be financially viable, and that this make, makes agencies, the state, and the bulk of Austrian society complicit in their exploitation. Amid the pandemic, the initiative has built a Facebook community of over 10,000 carers and organized protests demanding proper employment status and protection for care work. Another example, also hailing from Austria, is Sezonieri, uh, which is an activist-led campaign for the rights of agricultural workers in Austria, which supports the labor struggles of migrant seasonal workers in collaboration with the trade union Proge. Austria, like most European countries, West European countries, has put in place processes that illegalize migration. And this, in turn, has led to shortages of exploitable labor. During the pandemic, Austria has had to organize sp special fine visa regimes for workers from Eastern Europe countries so that they could come and pick asparagus and salad, the UK as well. These workers were provided with no, epidem no epidemiologically safe accommodation nor medical care. To counter this, Sezonieri has been working, have been working with migrant seasonal workers to prevent exploitation, improve their working conditions, and help enforce their rights. In their outreach activities, activists go onto farms to meet the workers facing the threat of trespassing on private land. In the midst of the pandemic, however, Sezonieri have put out a list of demands uh, for higher wages, better sanitary conditions, and compensation for the increased health risk incurred by migrant agricultural workers, as well as for the abolition of nativist and anti-migrant discourses, the decriminalization of migration, and the creation of a more just system of food production. Okay, now I'll move on, uh, on to the other subject I wanted to unpack. Uh, I'll come back a little bit to pirate care practices uh, uh, in this section as well, so bear with me. Um, let me first return to Memory of the World. Uh, Memory of the World, it's, uh, it's a coinage by UNESCO and we have borrowed it from UNESCO. It's a project promising to make available to the entirety of humanity the most valuable archives uh, that humanity has created. So given that UNESCO is limited by intellectual property rights, we are doing that for them or for that uh, purported humanity. So Memory of the World is a shadow library or pirate library. We call pirate libraries shadow libraries. Uh, Lawrence Liang has proposed that term. Uh, it's a shadow library uh, Marcel and I primarily run at uh, www.memoryoftheworld.org for the last 10 years. Uh, Memory of the World is a form of technolog technologically aided care labor for our no knowledge commons. It provides an infrastructure of knowledge sharing. Uh, when we were creating Memory of, of the World in around 2011, 2012, it was the moment when the largest of pirate libraries at the time, it, sort of the library genesis of its time called library.nu or Wikipedia was taken down. We imagined that today everyone could easily become an amateur librarian. Everybody has some PDF files of books lying on their computer. 
in our definition a public library is three things universal access to books for every member of society a library catalog and a librarian maintaining that catalog and that collection all it takes is to organize books on one's own computer and share them via internet with books ready to be shared meticulously cataloged everyone is a librarian when everyone is a librarian libraries everywhere my colleague marcel has used Calibra, it's a free software ebook manager with a feature to share books in the local area network to build a feature that will allow books to be shared through a peer-to-peer -to -peer topology to the open internet. You can see here that plugin in action, we no longer use it, but it was called Let's Share Books and basically you could share your collection uh, from your Calibra uh, application. An amateur librarian takes care of the book catalog and together with other amateur librarians runs a collective public library. Our library is a federation of librarians. We have around 20 fictional or real uh, librarians um, and all of them maintain very specific collections. Some, is, some are like uh, feminism in the Latin uh, American world uh, some of that uh, is socialist literature that was repressed from the libraries in 1990s in Yugoslavia and so on and so forth. At the moment, Memory of the World uh, is a tiny library compared to other shadow libraries. It has around 150,000 books. Uh, our project is a synergy of two efforts. First, it makes the case for the institution of public library and its principle of universal access to knowledge. And secondly, it is an exploration and development, development of distributed internet infrastructure for amateur librarians. Uh, alongside developing software for Memory of the World and plugin for Calibra, we have also built hardware uh, that you can see uh, in the background. Um, these are scanners. Amateur librarians at Memory of the World take care of different collections. Just to give you uh, a couple of examples uh, of our collections, one is called Written All, uh, which is a digitized collection of titles that were willfully removed from the shelves of creation libraries in the early 1990s because they were authored by Serbian authors, uh, published by Serbian publishers, uh, printed in Cyrillic. Uh, Herman's Library, it's a digitized collection of around 100 books uh, that the Angola Three Panth Black Panther Herman Wallace has put together uh, as 100 books that were formative for his politicization uh, while spending his time in uh, the Angola prison. He, he spent his lifetime in solitary confinement. Um, and a US-based uh, artist, Jackie Samuel, has asked him what would be his dream house, given that he has spent most of his life in solitary confinement, and what would be his uh, uh, dream library in that house. So we have made that uh, together with working with Jackie Samuel available. Uh, we also have a collection of Midnight Notes Collective. It's a collective that Silvia Federici and uh, George, George Cotenzis were uh, part of. Um, and catalog of liberated books. It's our largest collection containing over a thousand scanned books. Scanning is a real laborious process. Uh, to scan a book, it takes an hour or two of human labor, and thus when you find books online, most of them were born digital, and very few of them were scanned uh, and transformed by human labor. Many of us are, uh, of ours are. How it's not only us as, um, as a form of care, labor, building, and using technologies. It's many practices of pirate care that depend on technology, highly complex technological systems, and develop various toolkits to provide the care that they do. Uh, this is um, a reconnaissance plane uh, operated by Sea-Watch Early, you have seen a ship, Sea-Watch 4. They have gone through three uh, iterations. There is also a speedboat, Louise Michel, 
that is uh, affiliated to Sea Watch, so sea and rescue operations in the Mediterranean, really work with huge pieces of uh, technology and infrastructure, and many people on board of those ships uh, are amateur salespeople, except for the captains, but captains are also activists. Uh, you'll know of Karol Arakete. Um, yeah, so <clears throat> another example, going back to women on waves, obviously, uh, sea watch and sea and rescue operations in the Mediterranean, but also women on waves with their uh, ship-based operations are clearly an, 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 an analogy to pirates. You know, they are on the open seas and they are providing assistance. But recently, women on waves have started using uh, drones uh, to smuggle mifepristone and, and misoprostol drugs-inducing medical termination of pregnancy into countries where abortion is illegal. Or uh, this is a toolkit developed uh, uh, by trans, trans uh, hack feminist collectives in Spain, Ginepunk and trans, Biotrans Lab from use computer equipment uh, for emergency gynecological uh, self-diagnosis and care. Um, or this is an example from Sopra Soto, the pirate kindergarten. They have been using um, designs by, open source designs by Enzo Mari, an Italian architect and designer to create furniture for, um, for their kindergarten just using CNC cutters. Um, here you can see that, that furniture set in an exhibition we have made from our pirate care uh, syllabus. Um, but I can go uh, into that maybe in, Q and, in the Q&A. So to conclude the story around technologies, uh, we think that technologies are fundamental to care provision. Even at the level of uh, healthcare workers, they obviously op operate very complex machinery of a hospital, but they have sometimes very simple tools such as checklists and more and more empowered uh, care workers are using such tools to transform how they interact with caretakers and how they design or how they organize the process of care provision as a process of mutuality, interdependence, and uh, mutual sustenance, both for them as a team, but also as people relating to patients on whom patients depend and on whose trust patients depend. Okay, let me move on to pedagogies. Um, as said earlier, our project specifically is specifically aimed to activate collective learning processes from the knowledge generated in and through pirate care practices. To pursue our process of radical pedagogy, we have developed an, ex an experimental publishing framework called Sandpoints. Uh, we have developed Sandpoints to enable our syllabi as well as the collections of texts that accompany them to be collectively written, created, easily preserved, and maintained independently from large digital platforms. Currently, ubiquitous ne network technologies are participating in all-sided de-skilling of users in workplace, in free time, and in social reproduction in the everyday. While the mass industrial workforce in early industrial capitalism could acquire a collective understanding of the shop floor machinery and an understanding how to lay it still, how to sabotage it, with the network cybernetic systems, that is all the more harder. As can be seen, for instance, in the struggle of various platform workers to coordinate, unionize, and strike. Thus, in our techno technological work, we want to develop cloud-independent technologies that foster popular techn technical pedagogy at various skill levels empowering members of collectives to take care of the collective knowledge production 
and collective memory processes. In our view, editors, translators, librarians, uh, more or less technologically skilled, are at the center of our collective learning and upskilling. Usually when we talk about cultural uh, items or cultural production, we think of authors. But for various reasons, including our criticism of intellectual property rights, we see uh, the process of cultural production as a collective endeavor. And in that process, there are many roles that are essential to that production that are not uh, put in the front matter, that are, that are not authors. So we try to work with those roles and, and kind of empower those people in the processes so that they can sustain collect, collective work. Uh, just to give you an example, we were working with Sandpoints at a conference in France, or rather like a summer uh, camp or an academy in France at PAP, it's a, it's a performing arts center um, close to Reims. And um, in that conference, they were talking about intermediary roles, in, uh, intercessors, that's what they call them. It's a uh, quaint word. And then we proposed that for to use uh, send points, groups of participants would be tasked every day with overhearing, eavesdropping what others are saying uh, in the fringes of the conference about the topic that is being discussed. And it's usually uh, discussions that don't get recorded, acknowledged, and many thoughts percolate in that kind of manner in many meetings as I'm sure it will happen once we break out here. And uh, we thought, aha, okay, that's the care for the collectivity, trying to take care that it gets documented what's being said, the murmuring at the fringes of the conference. Um, So Sandpoints allows for the development of collective writing and publishing projects under the conditions of modest or no access. You can think of a prison, you can think of woods, you can think of uh, war, uh, war, war ridden regions or wherever there is sparse internet. You know? um, and it is aimed at the work of vulnerable groups who require that their content never be accessible online. You can make it accessible online, but you don't need to. The full editing in the offline environment with the ability to synchronize later in a peer-to-peer -peer network or with the central server is an, es an essential aspect for such a scenario. But also SendPoints allows readers to easily copy onto a USB drive a single folder containing the entire publication with a PDF collection of all references uh, in that publication. Both the publication and the collection can then be viewed with an internet browser, no access to the internet needed, without the need to install any additional software. Each SendPoint instance has a three-tier fuzzy hierarchy of documents written in Markdown that can be named or to correspond to technical or poetic exigencies of the publication being cre created. Uh, these hierarchical triads uh, can be, for instance, book, section, chapter, journal, issue, article, in our case, syllables, topic, session, or it can be house, floor, room, it can be ship, deck, compartment, or any other triad users might need. It also contains a library collection of electronic documents, articles, and books that can be directly linked to and rendered as Chicago Manual of Style references in the documents written in Markdown and SendPoints. Here in the background, you can see automatically generated PDF. So uh, what SendPoints does, it creates a website, if you want. It creates a PDF and it creates it, it generates it on the fly. Um, SendPoints was developed from a librarian state of mind. It's kind of a continuation of our work with memory of the world. It consists of three types of documents, and only these three types of documents. 
um, that are fundamental to digital preservation in general. It's plain text. Markdown is just a, a markup language for plain text, humanly readable and easy to understand. It's just structured text. PDFs, which are commonly used in uh, ar for archival purposes, and HTML. So for as long as we have internet, we'll have HTML. It was done with the idea that texts are always written on top of the collection of texts. Each send point instance therefore has its own library. Take, for example, the Tavo, a journal of Nubian studies. It is an issue of an academic journal that contains all the references in that issue available in the PDF. The editor, Vincent van greven has scanned all of the books and articles referenced in th that issue. Let me just demonstrate that to you. So this is the journal, and it's an issue of an academic journal. Nubian studies are studies in to sort of subaltern nations within the body of Egyptology. Um, and uh, this journal issue was dedicated to Nubian languages or Nubian linguist linguistics. Um, so here you can see all the articles in that issue. Uh, and all the references in uh, those articles are uh, here in the library. It's the Memory of the World style collection. Memory of the World looks like that, but it's a separate collection and it's contained within some points itself. Um, and you can get any reference than PDF. Uh, so Vincent has invested a lot of work to scan some of old writing and then put together some of the newer writing on uh, Nubian uh, the, uh, studies or linguistics specifically for this issue. He's now creating, it's the second issue uh, in, on SendPoints. And what SendPoints allows him to do is to push that out into a PDF that can then be disseminated through various channels that academic publications go to, I don't know, e-prints, this and that. And there is a peer review process that he integrated with that and so on and so forth. With SendPoints, users decide how far they want to engage the technological environment. Whether they want to only contribute text and let uh, more tech-savvy collaborators do the rest, or whether they want to level up and become editors themselves, responsible for the collective process of, process of writing. Or they can decide to become administrators, responsible for entering text into the system and structuring the publication. Barriers to entering all these roles are relatively low, and acquiring basic technological skills in Markdown Git and our custom tools goes a long way in building collective technical capacities for critical pedagogy. Over the last 20 years, activists have often demanded that the free software community follow the latest technological trends. That is to say, they would adopt a tool only if it replicated the usership models of corporate tools. Rejection of tools as too complicated as most non corporate tools are perceived to be, is endemic. Ironically, users have been learning new skills all along. They just haven't seemed to notice because the skills they acquired was through the use of corporate tools. Technical pedagogy is a way to intervene in this complicity of the users and corporate tools. We need to get to know the tools we use better. This is what we are trying to achieve in the microenvironment of SendPoints, to understand how technologies work and how they can be simple enough so that you can exercise relative levels of autonomy. It provides an environment similar enough to WordPress that it feels familiar, but at the same time it tries to teach the reflexive use of technology in collective practices. If organizing is urgent, 
then we do not need to care about how we do it. We can use Facebook or whatever tool works best for our cause, whatever tool people know best, whatever is vernacular. But there remains this vital question, and this is something I'd like us to invite to think about. What does organizing require of the technological surround in the long run? And furthermore, what degree of autonomy does a particular technology allow us to practice, for instance, Facebook? Our mission does not revolve around anti-corporate sentiments where we merely want to avoid big tech. Ours is not the contribution to the politics of consumption. But rather, it's a contribution to the politics of usership. With our tools, we as Pirate Care want to intervene in the division of labor that entangles us with our machines and our peers. And in that context, we ultimately see it as our responsibility to maximize the entanglement of technological pedagogies and collective organizing. Such is, such is demonstrated in, in various practices of pirate care. Okay, with this I would like to thank you for bearing with me and uh, yeah, I'm open to discussing any of these issues. So pirate care, technologies in care, or uh, critical pedagogies and technologies, um, or any other issues that might, you might have uh, re related to shadow libraries or Thank you.